my personality is that I have a, a deep empathy for people from across the political spectrum. I believe politics is informed by people's experiences they've had in their lives. And, uh, you know, I, I think what people have gone through and what they've seen with their own two eyes will always be more influential to them than data or information or reality or fact checks. N none of that stuff can, can hold a candle to what people experience in their day-to-day -day lives. And so I try to write from a place of empathy. I grew up in a very politically diverse place with a lot of people who are friends of mine and family, close people to me that I love who have politics across the spectrum. And I was in part inspired to start Tangle because I saw those people begin to hate each other when I didn't think they had to. And um, so I think it, it's, it's definitely rooted in empathy, uh, open-mindedness and a political incongruency, I like to say. I mean, I my people, the, the, the question I get from readers most often is what are your politics? Because I'm featuring a lot of other people's writing. So everybody always wants to know, are you a liberal? You're a conservative. And, you know, it's sort of a cop out, but it's also very true that my answer is I'm politically incongruent. It depends what the issue is. You know, I, I don't, I have no interest in saying I'm a liberal or a conservative. I have no loyalty to the Democratic Party or the Republican Party. I think, you know, conservative values are sometimes useful. I think liberal values are sometimes useful. You know, I have feelings about what politicians I think are doing better work than others. And I express those openly. That's like, you know, my take in the newsletter is my take. I try and be honest about what my biases are. So yeah, I mean, I would say empathetic, open-minded and transparent, right? I mean, radically transparent. That is, I, I am trying to also solve for the trust and media issues. So for instance, you know, I keep a running tally of every correction that I make in the newsletter. So if I publish something that's an error in the newsletter, somebody writes in and says, hey, you said, you know, 20 million people are unemployed. Actually, it's 14 million. The next day I will at the top of the newsletter, not in like a bottom footnote. The very first thing you'll see in the newsletter is a correction. I'll explain the error. I'll explain exactly how it happened in the editing process. And then I'll say, you know, this was the 42nd Tango correction in its 200 week history. And we track corrections in an effort to create transparency with our readers. And that was something I was very scared to do, but people really love it. It's one of the most popular and well-received parts of the newsletter. Um, I also share reader feedback pretty much every day. So if you write in and criticize something I wrote or, you know, how I formulated a sentence in the newsletter, you'll be one of many people who do that, but there's a chance that I will feature your feedback in the next day's newsletter. So I try and share kind of dissenting opinions every day, just because, you know, I'm one person and I think there are a lot of views and perspectives out there and, and I don't have a, I, I don't own the truth.